Astronauts rotate during their time aboard the International Space Station. Because the gravity that you feel in your body is so faint on the International Space Station, you're unable to live your life in the same manner that you would on Earth. How can you go about doing activities in space that are simple on the ground, such as exercising, sleeping, taking a bath, or going to the bathroom, without getting in trouble? In today's episode of The Royalist, we're going to take you to life inside the International Space Station. We've also made a video about life inside China's space station too. You can check that out too by clicking this I button at the top right. Anyway, let's begin. The courageous men and women who work on the ISS are definitely unique, yet at the end of the day, they're simply ordinary people going about their daily lives. Standard human conceptions of day and night start to appear rather stupid while speeding around the world at 17,100 miles per hour. An average ISS astronaut will watch the sun rise and set 16 times through the course of a 24-hour period. That's not how human bodies evolved. So, if nothing else, a regular 24-hour Earth day is maintained up there to keep the crew from spiraling into a nightmare of chronic severe jet lag. While it may appear on the internet that all they do up there is play guitars and create amusing videos, an ops planning team at Mission Control meticulously itemizes astronaut schedules down to 5-minute increments. The day is normally divided into 6 hours, from 6 a.m. to 9.30 p.m., and is based on UTC, which is essentially the same as Greenwich Mean Time. Anyway, let's get the day started. At 6 a.m., the lights are turned on. Astronauts are usually still sleeping in their sleeping bags, which are attached to the walls of their telephone box-sized cabins to keep them from bobbing around. Crew members may read emails, consume news online, or check on any nighttime missions sent over from Mission Control before getting up. Not that up or down have much significance on the ISS. Is there a bath? First and foremost, a quick shower, right? Well, that's a big no. On Earth, when you turn on a faucet, the water flows downhill. Gravitational forces cause this to happen. Water will fly in every direction if you open a faucet in space, where gravity is extremely weak. As a result, there are no bathtubs, showers, or washstands aboard the International Space Station. Despite doing it twice a day, the most important thing astronauts can expect for in terms of hygiene is to spray a pouch of warm water and a trace of soap into a washcloth and rub themselves down with it. Longer-haired crew members like to use a rinseless shampoo applied to their scalp and rubbed vigorously through with a towel. This requires very little water and was developed for hospital patients who can't shower. At least, you never need a hair dryer. How do astronauts cut their hair on the ISS? For those with long hair, there is a specially adapted hair cutting equipment known as the Floby, which is just a pair of clippers coupled to a vacuum cleaner, which helps to keep stray stubble from drifting away and becoming caught in the ISS's critical machinery. Toothbrushing Dental hygiene aboard the space station is quite comparable to that on the ground, and astronauts are even permitted to carry up their own personal brand of toothpaste. With no sinks or flowing water, the biggest disadvantage is that astronauts are forced to swallow at the end of their missions. How do they get dressed? It's time to put on some clothes. Astronauts often dress in loose-fitting, short-sleeved t-shirts because the temperature aboard the space station remains a constant 72 to 73 degrees, and there's little incentive to get dressed up or wear a sweater. They change their clothes as little as possible, sometimes wearing the same articles for several days at a time in the same place. This is due to the fact that there isn't a lot of storage space and certainly no washing facilities at the railroad station. A few days later, the stenchier objects are stowed away in a mesh bag until the next supply trip, which will be dispatched to a spectacular fiery end upon re-entry, perhaps having brought in fresh supplies before leaving on the mission. Are there toilets in space? It goes without saying that the prospect of using the restroom while in zero gravity presents a number of unpleasant obstacles. A personal urinal funnel is provided to each member of the crew, which they linked to a fan-driven vacuum hose to dispose of liquid waste. This fan sucks up any and all liquids, whisking them away to the next-door facility where, combined with moisture condensed from the air, their feces is broken down by electrolysis to generate new oxygen and produce the next batch of drinking water. Solid garbage is handled in a completely different way. It's the same fan, after all. It is pulled into an underground wastewater tank and enclosed inside a plastic bag. 
By the way, it's regarded as excellent etiquette for astronauts to, at the very least, make an effort to remember to leave a new bag for the next member of the crew. What do people eat in space? Let's go to breakfast. Toast, as well as sandwiches, are strictly forbidden aboard the space station due to the dangers of crumbs in zero gravity. They're not only unsightly, but if they're allowed to drift away uncontrolled, they become stuck in microscopic cracks and foster the spread of fungus. There are no traditional refrigerators on board, although BioServe Space Technologies is now testing a substitute. But there's enough to eat, including scrambled eggs, oatmeal, and waffles. True, much of it is dehydrated and needs to be rehydrated with warm water, but there's also lemonade, coffee, or tea if you don't mind sipping through a straw. After breakfast, as part of a properly planned diet under the supervision of nutritionists, there are around 300 distinct things on the ISS's menu of space cuisine. Most space food is maintained in plastic canisters and lasts for a long time. Some may be cooked in an oven, while others can be prepared by adding cold or hot water. There are other products such as nuts, breads, and fruits that are ready to eat right away. The first appearance of space cuisine was in the early 1960s. The first space meals were bite-sized solid foods or tubes carrying something akin to baby food to reduce size and weight. The flavor was mediocre at best. Later, dry, tinned, vacuum-packed, and freeze-dried foods were added to the list of accessible space foods. Today, astronauts may consume meals that are similar to those found on Earth. Japan is working to enhance space meals and is inventing delectable Japanese space cuisine. What happens if you get sick in space? Each astronaut who stays on the ISS is assigned a specific task and receives extensive training in that area. The astronaut assigned to the job of crew medical officer is in charge of emergency medical treatment. Not only is the crew medical officer educated in first aid, but also in suturing wounds and injecting medications. The International Space Station is equipped with a medical kit that contains medical devices and pharmaceuticals that are utilized as needed. In the event that a crew member experiences cardiac arrest, all astronauts are trained in emergency resuscitation, ensuring that anyone can perform the treatment at any time. Everyday Tasks Time for a crew conference call with Mission Control to go over the day's schedule. Almost every single work aboard the International Space Station is meticulously written and astronauts have their tasks meticulously planned step by step down to the smallest detail. Maintaining equipment is one of the most critical responsibilities, and this includes both preventative work performed before things go wrong and remedial actions taken after something has been damaged or destroyed. Maintenance on filters, cleaning of surfaces, upgrading computer software, and even taking away the garbage are all critical considerations, which is often loaded onto the Progress service van, which was launched by Russia. A spacewalk will be required from time to time as part of the crew's maintenance responsibilities. For activities that appear to be as simple as changing batteries on the station's outside, it might take four hours simply to get dressed and another hundred pages to go through the checklist. Yes, there is a diaper in there, in case you were wondering. Typically, the crew navigates the ISS's interior by using a system of handrails placed at regular intervals on every surface. Astronauts' calluses are reported to fade from the bottom of their feet, but sprout on the top during long trips, because this is now a highly important body component for keeping them upright and steady. Surfaces in the ISS are generally embellished with Velcro strips in addition to the handrails, this is to prevent portable tools, pens, and other objects from drifting away and becoming lost over lengthy periods of time.